call on to the next speaker, Luca Jojeni, who's, who's going to talk to us about group psychotherapy based on human birth theory with adolescents and young adults. Good afternoon. Thank you to everybody. Thank you uh, for inviting me here. Okay, now, good afternoon. I am a psychiatrist and a psychotherapist, and I work with patients with eating disorders, dysmorphophobia, and early stage psychotic episodes. These are usually young patients who frequently show such acute and severe symptoms that their whole life can be at risk. Adolescence is an eventful period in one's own life with transition from infancy to adulthood, when young people find themselves facing a change, both physically and mentally, which gives rise to a whole new adult identity. Facing these changes can lead to a crisis that is expressed through suffering, which, however, should not be confused with an illness. This is important to recognize the physiological nature of, his, of this crisis, which allows the adolescents to develop into a new reality. Therefore, psychiatrists who work with young people should know how to distinguish malaise, the expression of a physiological crisis, from the first symptoms of a mental illness. To this end, Human Birth Theory by Massimo Fagioli offers an important tool. In the first place, it is needed offers a model to understand the physiological development of the human mental reality. And second, it sets the very moment when human thinking first appears at birth. This follows the reaction of the brain to light via retinal fibers and takes the shape of initial psychic reactivity that is originally conceived as preverbal and imaginative and named disappearance fantasy. Concretely, while the fetus that is immersed in the amniotic fluid is in a fundamentally stable homeostasis balance, the baby just coming into the world is suddenly overexposed to a multitude of stimuli. Cold, noise, and especially light. Light is the new stimulus that instantly activates the brain via retinal cortical projections. According to human birth theory, such neural reaction takes the psychic form of the so-called disappearing fantasy. That is, the newborn makes the external world, which is perceived as aggressive, disappear, and at the same time, they create the image of the experience of the prenatal condition, when the fetus was immersed in the amniotic fluid. Therefore, at birth, the very first thought is the newborn's capability to imagine. The newborn imagines to be still in the dark and distant warmth of the amnios. This capability to imagine creates the memory of the sensation the fetus receives in the womb, that are linked to the kinesthetic and cutaneous stimuli. This memory allows the newborn to sense that they are not alone, having the certainty that the breaks exist, another human being to relate to and who is able to satisfy their requirement for love, as well as their physical needs. So they are able to develop. After birth, in order for the newborn to develop physiologically, over and above the satisfaction of the body's primary needs, 
it is fundamental for them to perceive the quality of an affectionate relationship with their caregivers. If the child's demand for love is satisfied, a physiological development follows, where a few fundamental steps can be identified. Birth, breastfeeding, perception of one's own face in the mirror, winning, perception of a human being who differs from oneself, adolescence, and the relationship with, the, with a different human being. It should be underlined that while it is assumed that at birth and throughout the, the first year of life there is a complete fusion between physical reality and psychic reality, when language starts to be articulated and also structuring of consciousness starts, the non-conscious world is set aside. At puberty, due to psychophysiological changes, this psychic reality of the first, of the first year of life reemerges and, for the first time since birth, merges with the physical reality that is changing. Sexuality appears, and this non conscious world, this mental reality of the first months of life, is brought into play within affectionate relationship with other human beings. Indeed, men and women are the same in that they are human beings. However, at the same time, they are profoundly different. This same but different oxymoron cannot be solved in pure rational terms. For instance, in order to be able to relate with this irreducibility, a preverbal Irrational relationship is needed, as it was the case in the first year of one's own life. Indeed, the other human being represents this preverbal reality of the first year of life, which was left behind and becomes an unknown and irresistibly different reality to which to relate. As we mentioned earlier, at birth, once the newborn's identity is realized for separation from the mother, hope, certainty that the breaks exist emerges. Meaning, hope, certainty that another human being exists who can satisfy the newborn's requirement for love, apart from physical needs. During adolescence, this dimension can be found in the search for another human being who will represent the unknown dimension of the first year of life. If this person disappoints the desire, then the adolescent may become ill, which may also occur if the parents show indifference toward or anger against the adolescent's new identity. Indeed, it is during adolescence that mental disorders usually develop. However, young people who show the first symptoms are those who reach adolescence unprepared, with an inner image that has already been compromised. Due to this fragility, it is essential not to add new disappointing experiences. In fact, many times adults do not know how to react to or deal with young people's difficulties and tend to judge them, claiming they are indolent, bad-mannered, etc. And finally, experiencing a crisis themselves before their children's changes. Breakups, betrayal by a friend, etc are experienced as further disappointments, which add to those the child has already experienced during their first year of life. <clears throat> A relationship with caregivers, where the child's requirements for love and care are not satisfied, despite material needs being met, 
cause anxiety in the child. The child may react by making the relationship itself disappear by means of a non-conscious pathological dynamics that is called an element pulsion. This makes the disappointing relationship disappear in the child's mind, thus making it non-existent, as if it had never existed. However, it is not true. There was first a disappointing relationship, which, however, now no longer hurts, because the child has made the affection linked to it disappear thus partially turning it non-affective. The repetition of the disappointing relationship and of the annulment pulsion can lead to the loss of the possibility to actually see human reality in depth and relate to the non-conscious world of affection. This is how the mind thus compromise reaches the turmoil of adolescence and its merging with a changing body does not occur or is not harmonic. For instance, it may happen that the mind attacks the body, as it is the case with eating disorder, or self-inflicted injuries, or suicide. We maintain that psychotherapy for adolescents should not follow any different approach or procedures from psychotherapy for adult patients. This is because, uh, even if symptoms in adolescents can, become, can sometimes have more striking features, they are linked to the same psychic pathological dynamics as in adults. Setting, transference, and interpretation are the same. What differs is the psychotherapeutic relationship with, adoles with adolescent patients. As I will explain tomorrow in my presentation about group psychotherapy based on human birth theory, psychotherapy hinges on the non-conscious relationship between the physician and the patient, where two different realities come face to face and clash. The psychotherapist must know how to interpret the annulment pulsion of the patient who will challenge their abilities. The psychotherapist will have to be able to make the patient see how interhuman relationships do not have to be disappointing, and that a relationship with the non-conscious world of affection is possible. The psychotherapist should not make any attempt to shape the patient based on their own ideal or pseudo-educative model, but rather interpret and unveil what is wrong, the illness, once the illness can be healed, patients regain their own original healthy state at birth. This will let them express their own originality. Thank you.